Yeah, it's uh, on Instagram. There's a guy, he uh he be doing a, like paranoid when I'm high, like <laughs> Instagram videos. No. And he be yeah, and so like he be walking around his house, but he walk like he'll walk like on his tippy toes and like and you can tell like the way he does it is to make it look like he's high. Uh-huh. But he's trying not to look like he's high when he's doing the videos. Yeah. So like he'd be walking around his parents and like his dad be like looking at him like, what is wrong with him? And he'd be like walking around. But the song that goes with the video, I gotta send it to you. I gotta find it. Yeah. But that's how that's how she walked in the background. <laughs> when, once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, we're going uh <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Just Cause Podcast. What's going on, cousins out there? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's living their best life. Uh, we're about to dive into another episode. As usual, I got my my co-host, Molly. Put it into fruition. And uh, you know who I am. You know, Rashad, a.k.a. Bruce the Leroy. Because I got that glow. Yeah. <laughs> so on this episode tonight, matter of fact, before I get into that, how you doing, Molly? I'm doing awesome. Okay. Really awesome. I'm very excited about the next couple of weeks, what we have coming. And please don't put me on the stage because I'm telling you, when I get get ready to get something said, it's gonna be a lot of hurt feelings. So I'm just Taking it all in right now because it's gonna be a joy. I love the occasions that I come into when you put me up against a challenge. Mm. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I do like a I do like a good challenge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get drawn. Yeah, huh? Sometimes I get too drawn into it. I know. Now I'm I'm all the way tapped in. I am WWE <laughs> tapped in right about now. <laughs> oh man. So like, cold like... city Boston type tap. Ban it. All right. So uh so tonight's episode, we want to do something different, do something special. Uh we wanted to get into talking about credit, like not your usual others but getting into the basic of like what credit is how it uh how your credit score is calculated all that stuff uh what's the credit report what are the credit bureaus what's the FICO score all that stuff so we're going to get into that a little bit uh we may be it may be a two-parter this may be a two-part episode but that's what we're going to get into i got a slide deck so if you're listening uh through the podcast uh platform that you listen to uh you can go to our youtube channel uh, just cause podcasts on YouTube, absolutely, and then uh, you'll be able to watch this uh, watch this video, and you'll be able to see the slideshow that uh, we put together. And awesome! So, without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, get this going. I'm following along as well. Uh, 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 uh. All right. What do you see? Do you see it? Mm-hmm, I do. Okay. Just want to make sure. All right. So let's go ahead and kick this off. So make sure I can. All right. So the course outline, what we're going to talk about is going to, uh, what is credit? We're going to define credit. Uh, we're going to talk about the components of credit, the credit score, the credit report. And then lastly, we'll get into the credit bureau. All right. So first lesson, we're going to discuss what credit is. Uh, we're going to talk about the definition. We're going to talk about the credit score. We're going to talk about FICO. And we're also going to talk about types of accounts. All right, so what is credit? Credit is generally defined as a contractual agreement between a lender and a borrower repaid with interest. Very important, repaid with interest. Uh, I had a discussion with one of my uh, little cousins about asking what credit you know, if she knew what a credit card was, and she said yes. And I said, well, if I have a, uh, if I had just for purposes, if I had two thousand dollars in the bank and I got a credit card with a thousand dollar limit, how much money do I have? And she was saying three thousand dollars. And I said, no, that's not how credit works. Uh, 
Yes. <laughs> and she's only like nine, I think. Kai, she thinks like eight. No, or Eleven. Eleven. Man, uh-huh. wait. All right. Yeah, but she's only 11. So, like, I'm trying to, you know, trying to introduce her into his, you know, early. So, yeah, so it's uh, all it is an agreement between a lender and a borrower, and that money is repaid with interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, also refers to an individual or business credit worthiness or credit history. Uh, the borrower promises to repay the lender or, lender or risk financial or legal penalties. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, and then uh, the amount of money a consumer or a business has available to a borrow. So that's mm-hmm. what credit is. Uh, so it's it's a little different when it comes to when you talk about an individual person and when it comes to a business entity, uh, yeah. what credit is. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? That's something maybe we need to we talk about that later. Like how <laughs> topic. Yes, yeah, another topic. Like how you could use business credit. Mm-hmm. Versus your own individual credit. All right. Boom. All right. Credit score. Uh, Credit score is a number uh, lenders use to help them decide how likely it is that they will be repaid on time if they give a person a loan or a credit card. Uh, Your credit. Your credit score is a number between three hundred and eight fifty that depicts a consumer's credit worthiness. It is based on your credit history. And it's calculated by five categories, and we'll get into that in the next uh, section. If I'm going too fast, let me know. I tend to talk fast sometimes. You, you're okay. I think you're okay. Okay. All right, FICO. Uh, if you haven't heard about a FICO score, this is FICO. It was, FICO stands for is Fair Isaac and Company, and it is a data analytic company focused on credit scoring services. It was founded by Bill Fair, Bill Fair and Earl, Earl Isaac in 1956. This is a, well, now it's a publicly traded company. The, yeah. FICO, the FICO company is a publicly traded company and they, they're, they are a data analytic company. So they don't just, do, their main focus is credit scoring, but they do other analytics too. Uh, they measure consumer credit risks and became a fixture of consumer lending. And they are used by 90% of all lenders in a publicly traded company. Again, if you're investing, you can invest in the FICO that tells you what your score is. You can. You absolutely can. No. I have my FICO as well. And I pay for it monthly. And it is very informative. It's different from your credit sesame and your nerd wallet, all of that good stuff that gives you your uh credit scores so this is what you need to focus on yes mm-hmm. indeed all right types of account you have installment credit which usually comprises of loans where you borrow a fixed amount and agree to make a monthly payment toward the overall balance until the loan is paid off student loans personal loans mortgages are examples of installment accounts and then you have revolving credit is a typically associated with credit cards, but can also include some types of home equity loans. Uh, With revolving credit accounts, you have a credit limit and make at least minimum monthly payments according to how much credit you use. Uh, Revolving credit can fluctuate and doesn't typically have a fixed term. Important. Very important. Very important. All right, so that was the first lesson. We talked about what credit is, which is a contractual agreement between lender and borrower. We talked about credit score. We talked about the FICO. And we talked about types of accounts, uh, installment credit and revolving credit. Now, what we're going to get into next. We're going to get into what are the components of your credit score. This is what makes up your credit score. This is what we already talked about. All right, so there's five ca- uh, components or categories that make up your credit score. All right, and it's broken down into percentage. Uh, the one that makes the most uh, effect on your credit is payment history. This makes up 35% of your credit. Uh, the amount of credit you owe is the next one. It makes up 30% of your credit score. The length of your credit history makes up 15%. And then new credit and credit mix each make up 10% of your credit score on their own. Uh, something that I didn't know that I learned uh, early is that uh, when you get new credit, it actually can help you 
praise your credit score because yeah. it, and it, it's not just getting credit, but what types of credit? Maybe we talk about those different types of uh, credit, those different different types of accounts that you get is what mm-hmm. can help your credit score and what helps uh, can raise your credit score. It can also affect your credit score too if you don't if you don't get new credit and it you know if you get too much new credit in a short amount of time and mm-hmm. then it makes it look like you know that you're trying to get into too much debt yeah so there is a there is a method to when to acquire new credit and how and your credit mix but let's break down these five categories right so payment history uh is the most important factor it makes up 35 percent uh one missed payment can negatively affect your credit score or rating uh this i know very (laughs) intimately uh during the pandemic when uh my mortgage company reported that I didn't make a payment, and but I did make a payment, but mm-hmm. the payment got kicked back for whatever reason. And so when I found that out, and then I had to get that fixed, because like uh, I think that one missed payment like dropped my credit score by like forty five points. It will tear your credit scores up. Absolutely, one, and, and multiple ones, man, you'll be crying in a corner somewhere. Yeah. I was crying over that 45 points. I said, yo, what is going on? So uh, I reached out to my mortgage company. It was like, look, I made a payment, but the payment got kicked back for whatever reason. And when I found out, I made the payment and I reached out to them. All I had to do was like shoot an email to uh, this email address that they gave me and mm-hmm. uh, they they fixed it. And so call, contacting your uh, those who you owe and talking to them and you know letting them know what's going on or whatever can really yeah. you know they can go back and you know change what they reported to the company uh to the credit bureaus so it's yeah. important uh and let's see uh lenders like to see payments made and on time when considering new clients uh unblemished or perfect payment history tells lenders that you are reliable and are a low risk borrower so payment history is very important if you got old stuff, you, well, you got old stuff, anyway, I, 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 <laughs> amounts old, right? All right, next important factor, it makes up 30% of your credit score. Uh, this represents your credit utilization ratio. It is calculated by dividing the total revolving credit outstanding by the total of all your revolving credit limit. All right, using more than 30% of your credit utilization is viewed negatively. Uh, 0% ratio is also viewed negatively. So if you got credit cards and you never use it, that is also viewed negatively. And whoever owns that uh, credit card that you don't use, they can cut your credit card off because you're not using it. (laughs) People pay attention, please. I hear the stories about, you know, you going in and you haven't used it for eight or 10 months even six months for that matter, and they will cut you off and not give you any type of notice that um, they have done that. So yes, at least use it every couple of months, at least every two months, even if you have to buy like a soda or something like that. That's what I've been told. Yeah. So uh, yeah. And uh, a rule of thumb is to stay below 10% on average of your uh, credit utilization. So I mean, using more than thirty percent is negatively, but if you want to be in that 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 green area, you yeah. want to stay you want to stay below ten percent. So between seven to ten percent uh, is where you want to stay. Uh, I know m- me myself, I transitioned to the point where I only use my credit card when I make purchases, and then I just pay my credit card back. Uh, you know, at the at the at the uh, end of the month or the beginning of the month or whenever my credit is due during the statement period and not the uh the bill period that's how you get away that's how you get away with not paying interest Mm -hmm. all right proof of thought all right credit history length you know how long you've held credit accounts makes up 15 percent of your fico score all right. This includes the age of your oldest credit account, the age of your newest credit account, and the average age of all your accounts. Uh, generally, the longer your credit history, the higher your credit scores. 
And also, and I think I talk about it later in this uh, in this presentation, but uh, if you get too much new credit, that can also affect your credit history. Yes. All right. So like you may have a uh, credit card that you had for years, but if you've been acquiring new credit in a short amount of time, that can definitely affect your average time of your, your credit history. Mm -hmm. So again, that's where you want to be careful when you uh, when you're trying to acquire new credit. And there was a couple uh, uh, Facebook groups that I've uh, recently followed, like I think it was like Navy Federal Credit Cards or something like that. And then I joined a couple of uh, American Express groups, and like some of them maybe you know they be sharing how they acquired a new credit card through some of these companies, and it's like they be telling some of their backstory and like they've, they got a credit card like December and then they applied and got another card in like March or something like that. And it's like, you know, you generally want to wait around six months before you get another credit card. And that's like a minimum, like minimum is like six months be uh, before you get another credit card. So uh, before you go out here and just start getting a whole bunch of credit cards, just think about that and uh, know what you have a plan of what you're doing. Yes. That's very important. And you have to know how to manage those credit cards as well. Mm -hmm. If you um, have had a problem in the past of uh, spending and you get a hold of, you know, uh, a higher credit limit ca credit card, then, uh, you know, you're probably going to spend that that money. So. Right. Uh, like I said, like getting a new credit card with a limit does not mean that you have X amount of you know yeah. money. It's just you have uh you're able to leverage that amount of money, but you you know you still got to pay that back. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. All right. So new credit, uh, the number of credit accounts you've recently opened, as well as the number of hard inquiries lenders make when you apply for credit, and this accounts for ten percent of your FICO score. Mm -hmm. uh, hard inquiries is when a creditor has requested to look at your credit file to, to, to determine how much risk you pose as a borrower. Uh, too many accounts or inquiries can indicate increased risk, increased risk, and as such can hurt your credit score. So, uh, prime example: when you go to a car dealership and you're trying to get that new car, and you allow that car dealership to run your credit, they're running your credit through like five to however many lenders to see who's going to take your account or who's going to give you the money to purchase that car at that car dealership. And that's, that is not great because then now you have a bunch of inquiries on your credit report and that can uh, very negatively affect your credit report or your credit score. I'm sorry. So, uh, so uh, some advice I can give is, if you're going to a dealership to purchase purchase a vehicle, uh, if you know that you have good credit or you have great credit, one, how you can try go for your own bank first and securing a, uh, a loan for them first. And then all you have to do is just go to the dealership and pick whatever car you want and just let them know that you already secure financing with your bank. If you mm -hmm. want to go for the dealership, uh, you tell them that you only want your credit ran through one company and usually when they do uh when people ask that they usually only want it to go through whoever that dealership is so if it's like chevy or gm you tell them that you only want your credit ran through gm if it's mercedes-benz i think uh you say you only want through like mercedes or whoever their like main lender is mm -hmm. uh so you are you do have the power to tell them that you only want your credit ran through specific uh lenders yeah very important. Very important. <laughs> All right. Credit mix. All right. Credit mix accounts for 10% of your FICO score. So people with top credit scores often carry a diverse portfolio of credit accounts, which might include a car loan, credit card, student loan, mortgage, or other credit products. Uh, credit scoring models consider the types of accounts and how many of each you have as an indication of how well you manage a wider range of credit products. Now, does that mean to go out here and try to acquire 
a bunch of uh, credit products? No, not at all. It's just uh, if you already have a car, you have a credit card and you have a mortgage, then you're already in the game. You have a mix of credit. So uh, you're doing well. If you don't have a credit card, because I know there are some folks that don't have credit cards because someone that they trust was told them never get a credit card. Credit cards is the devil. Uh, don't mess with that stuff. It's only for certain people. That is not true. All right. Uh, if you if you don't have a credit card, then when you try to you know get a car or you try to get a mortgage to purchase your home or whatever, then they and you don't have any credit, then they have nothing to base your credit worthiness off of. All right. So uh, this can this can negatively affect you. Like you know, no credit tends to be bad, uh, worse than worse credit, bad credit. Yeah. So it's very important. And also like, uh, there's some countries out here that don't have a uh, credit. They don't have any, there's no, there's no leverage of credit. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Like there's countries out here that if you want to, uh, like get into an apartment, mm -hmm. like you got to provide like a year or two of like rent up front really yes so there was like there was like security deposits that we paid which is like what yeah. first and last month or something like that uh -huh. now you paying for these first two years up front really yes it works out too but you know um it, we do things a little different over here i guess mm -hmm. they, have, they have their own way of you know handling business and i get the the benefits of it and the downfalls as well so yeah Mm. so it's just uh just learning how to leverage your credit and just getting you know financially literate because you have to be financially literate in this country if you want to continue to survive absolutely or if you want to get out of a situation that you don't want to be in no longer yes all right mm -hmm. all right all right so, uh lesson two so we talked about the five categories that make up a credit score your payment history, your amounts owed, your credit history length, your new credit, and your mixed credit. All right. All right, moving on. All right, third lesson. We're going to, uh, we're going to discuss your credit score, like the actual score, and uh, what are the different credit scores and how are they evaluated? All right. So first, credit score is a three-digit score based on the information on the credit report, right? Helps lenders determine the likeness of a borrower will repay and pay on time. It affects how much borrow, how many months to repay, and how much interest is applied. It's very important because there's some people out here that will charge you extremely high interest based off of your credit score. All right. And uh, you like again, your score ranges from 300 to 850. The higher, the better. All right. All right. So you have a generic credit score. So your generic credit scores are used by many types of lenders and businesses to determine general credit risks. You can access your generic score as one score using the same formula across all three credit reporting agencies. What is that formula? The lesson that we just went over. Your payment history, the amount owed, your history, your new credit, and your credit mix. That is the formula that uh, everyone uses to act uh forgot your credit score right yeah. which not everybody doesn't do because they got fico and fico does it for them mm -hmm. but there well i'll talk about that later all right so you do have custom credit scores so a custom credit scores are developed for use by individual lenders right uh, they rely on credit reports and other information such as account history from the lender's own portfolio so if you've already been dealing with a lender They'll go, they'll use that history that they have with you to rely on your custom credit score. Uh, they are unique to the specific business, or they may be used by specific types of lenders, such as credit unions. All right. Custom credit scores can apply to specific types of lending, such as mortgage lending and auto lending. All right. So I don't know if you've ever been to a car dealership or somewhere else, and they were like, yeah, this is your credit score, but based on our history with you and blah, 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 yada, yada, this is what your credit score is with us. And yeah, we're going to let you go ahead and get this, but we're going to charge you like these double digit interest rate. 
25%. Jeez. <laughs> Pay for that card three times over. Hey, some people don't care. Just give it to me. I need the card know. at this time. Just give hey, it I, to me. I can dig it. I can dig it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. All right. All right. Ways to improve your credit score. Pay all of your bills on time. Uh, this will help ensure your payment history remains unblemished and shows lenders that you have a history of managing credit responsibly. Uh, pay down credit card balances. Uh, keeping balances on your credit card low will help keep your credit utilization ratio at a good level. All right. Paying the minimum balance every month is not the way you want to do it. I'm letting you know right now. Paying that minimum balance is not the way. And actually, if you're only paying the minimum balance, like you, there's a chance you would never pay that credit card off mm -hmm. uh, because it depends on the interest rate that you're paying for that credit or that credit card. So, you know, if you have, a, I don't know, $15,000 uh, balance on your credit card, and you're only paying like a hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. but your interest rate is yeah. like 15%, 15 to 20%. Mm -hmm. So the majority of that hundred dollars is going to interest. Mm -hmm. And like, so you're not, you're not even making a dent in your credit balance when you're only paying the, the minimum balance. Yes. So, uh, you need to think, really, really look at your finances. Take a look at what you, uh, what you can do, and pay that credit card balance down faster. If you have uh, a high balance and you're only making minimum payments, that's not that's not the way you want to do it. You want to remember the general rule is you want to stay below ten percent. Yes. So uh, please take a look at that and stop, you know, stop paying those minimum balances. Now, if you you know, I don't know if you got like a two hundred dollar balance. I mean, I mean, you can pay the minimum balance on that, but again, that most of that's going to your interest. So most of that's going to the actual person, and it's not going to your actual uh, balance. Yeah. Uh, apply for credit only when you really need it. So credit applications typically result in a hard inquiry being added to your credit report. Uh, these can have a short-lived negative effect on your credit score, and their effect can compound if you submit frequent credit applications. Uh, taking on a lot of new credit also reduces your average age of credit accounts, which can impact your score. Again, this is the example that you know I used earlier. Like when you go to those car dealerships and they run your credit through multiple lenders, those are all hard inquiries that is going to show up on your credit report. Up to you, what? Two years, right? Uh, the increase. Uh -huh. You know what? I don't know off the top of my head right now, but it may be a year or two. Okay, it's it's not seven years as. No, 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 no. Yeah, so, so you, like, it start it refreshes itself, so those inquiries will drop off within that two year mark. Yeah, I think it's shorter than that. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll have to get back to you. Hey, and if you any time that you have, uh, if you got questions uh, about this uh, presentation that we have, or you got some additional questions on anything that we put out, by all means, please go to our Facebook page, uh, Just Cause Podcast, and you can drop a comment. This uh, this video and this uh, podcast episode will be on our Facebook page, and you can also go to our instagram page uh you can also drop a comment or if you're watching this on youtube drop a comment on youtube and we will get back to you and answer your questions or if you have some suggestions or some input that you would like to uh provide by all means go to those uh go to those platforms and let us know mm -hmm. all right so this right here i thought was interesting when i was doing my research and putting this together but this is the average score by generation and this was uh as of it shows uh, 2020 and 2021 so as of the end of 2021 the nationwide average score is 714 and that is a 24 point increase over the past 10 years mm -hmm. uh millennials 25 to 40 
2020, the average score was 679. Last year was 686. So, uh, huh? I said I can see that. Mm. And the ones with the highest is, of course, your uh, your solid generation, your 70, 76 and plus. Uh, some, in 2020, they had 758. In 2021, they had a 760. And your Generation Z, your 18 to 24, uh, 2020, they had a 674. In 2021, they had a 679. Mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. It is. It, we're teaching them well. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, that's the end of uh, lesson three. We talked about credit scores and three a score. We talked about your generic credit score, your custom credit score, ways to improve, and the average credit score in the nation. All right, lesson four. We're going to talk about uh, what is a credit report and how and what do credit reports content contain. All right, so what is a credit report? Your credit report lists what types of credit you use, the length of time your accounts have been opened and whether you've paid your bills on time. Uh, it tells lenders how much credit you use and whether you're seeking new sources of credit. And it gives lenders a broader view of your credit history than do other data sources, such as banks' own customer data. A credit report also includes information on where you live and where you've been sued or arrested or have filed for bankruptcy. Uh, yeah, I'll get into that. Okay. All right, so what's inside? Uh, your credit report contains personal information, your credit account history, your credit inquiries, and public records. Uh, this information is reported by your lenders and creditors to the credit bureaus. And much of it is used to calculate your FICO score to inform future lenders about your credit worthiness, right? So if you, uh, if you haven't, if you're not looking at your credit report at least three, four times a year, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice because if there's bad information on there, that stuff can affect your credit score, which also affects your credit worthiness and affects the way you are able to leverage credit. Uh, yes, you are provided one free credit report a year, but if you're only looking at it that one time a year, uh, that stuff that's bad that's on there is what's affecting your credit score. And then the next time that you look at it is, the next, you know, it's a year of like damaged credit. Yes. You know what I mean? And you're able to dispute that stuff. And but disputing stuff also takes time, depending on what you're disputing. So that's additional time that your credit is being affected. Mm-hmm. So if you're not, like I said, uh, like Molly said, she has uh, my FICO. I know I have uh, Experian that uh, I get a fresh credit report every 30 days. Yes. Man, yeah, and it, and it, <laughs> And they'd be sending me uh send me little ding messages too, like, oh, yeah. you've done this, or hey, you haven't looked at this, or you got a new credit report. And I'm like, all right, I got it. <laughs> I got it. You, you want me to play, you want me to get on there and look around. I got it. Yes. Calm mm-hmm. down. All right. So what's your personal, personally identifiable information? Your PII, your name, your address, your social security number, your date of birth, and employment information are used to identify you. Your PII is not used to calculate your FICO score. But what it is used is if you haven't noticed when you try to apply for certain things or you log on to certain things and they try to identify you. So like if you're trying to apply for a loan online at your bank, and they're trying to identify you, they use information off your credit score, off your, excuse me, off your credit report, like your PII, like where have you lived in the past? Where have you, you know, where have you worked? What was the address of where you worked? Like all that stuff is on your credit report. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if people know you and know some of this information, they're able to steal your identity when they're locked, when they try to apply for stuff because they know some of this information about you. So that's why it's important that you look at this stuff and that you're looking at your credit report, especially your uh, PII, because that information is what, you know, is used to identify you when you're not somewhere in person. Yes, it's good. Yeah. Um, You know, some banks, I know for one that I have, they go way back to, well, they have went way back into my childhood addresses Mm -hmm. asking me. And it's just like, how do you know that? But you know they have it. Yeah, and they're going to validate that. Yes, 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I've, I've deleted some stuff, some addresses and some other stuff off of my credit report, too. So Really? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Especially when I first came in the Army and all that stuff was done. Like, nah, get that off there. <laughs> get all that off there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, credit accounts. Uh, Linda's report on each account you have established with them, right? The the report, the type of account. They report the type of account, credit card, auto loan, mortgage, et cetera. The date you open the account, your credit limit or loan amount, the account balance and your payment history, including whether or not you have made your payments on time. Uh, And this makes up the majority of your FICO score. So this is another reason why it's important that you look at your credit report more than once a year. Or if you're not looking at it at all, you need to start looking at it because this is the information that affects your credit, your, your credit score. Because uh, if you never if you never miss a payment and for some reason they had a mix up and they got you missing a payment or you was late on a payment, like that stuff needs to get fixed. Mm-hmm. If they can't if they can't provide the documentation or to verify that you did miss that account, they have to change it. They have yeah. to fix it. All right. If there's an account that's you know, you know, is closed mm-hmm. and you no longer have, but it's showing that's still open on your uh, on your credit report. That's stuff that needs to change. You need to show that it's been closed. Right. Yeah. So it's important that you're looking at your credit report more than once a year or you need to be losing. If you're not looking at it at all, you need to be looking at it more than once a year, mm-hmm. uh, at least two to three times a year. I say every quarter, every every three months, you should be looking at it and making sure everything is coping steady. I would definitely agree to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, credit inquiries. All right, the, the inquiries section contains a list of everyone who accessed your credit report within the last two years. Uh, the report you see lists both hard inquiries spurred by your requests of credit and soft inquiries, such as when lenders order your report to send you a pre-approved credit offer in the mail, which I'm tired of getting, and I'm tired of seeing it and cluttering up my mailbox because everybody keeps sending me. All these, you've been pre-selected. I get the terminology that you get. Me being pre, you pre-select everybody that you sent this out to. It doesn't mean that you actually looked at me or my credit score. You just sent out this filler mail stuff. Yeah. I'm tired of getting it. <laughs> or if you've been pre-selected or you've been pre-approved between a hundred and two thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever. You've been approved between zero a uh, hundred, was it like a thousand and thirty-five thousand dollars? Whatever. You just giving this broad range of numbers. Just to get, just trying to get my interest. You're not gonna get me. All right, that stuff goes right in the trash. <laughs> right mm-hmm. in the trash. Right in the trash. <laughs> All right, lenders can only see the hard inquiries on your credit report. Soft inquiries are only visible to you. Yes. Uh, soft inquiries have no effect on your FICO score. So while multiple hard inquiries can be an indication of higher risk and may cause your score to dip. Mm-hmm. Public records and collections. All right, credit bureaus also collect public record information from state and county courts, including bankruptcies. Uh, Debt that is overdue and has been sent to collections also appears on your credit report. Uh, You should always verify that the information on your credit report is correct so your lenders see the most accurate FICO scores when you apply for credit. If you find an error on your report, you should report it to the appropriate credit bureau. So if you see something on your Experian, then that's who you need to uh, report and dispute if you see it on TransUnion or if you see it on Equifax, all right? And we'll talk about those in, in the next uh, segment. But uh, you should, oh, uh, no, debt that is overdue has been sent to collections. Collections, all right? If you, uh, if you owe, if you had a balance with somebody and that account got closed and they send and one of these collection agencies buys it from them to try to re, uh, get that money. So one, whoever that original lender is, is insured. So if you didn't pay that balance, they're going to get paid from the insurance company because they insure their, their, uh, their loans. All right. And then they get paid on top of that because these collection agencies buys it from them to try to get the money from you. That's why when you get these collection uh, uh, correspondence and they'd be like, you can settle for a lower amount. Yeah. That's usually because they've already bought it from whoever the original lender is. 
and they probably bought it for cheaper than what they're saying that they're going to settle with you for. Mm -hmm. And then when you go and, and you respond to that, like you are restarting the clock on that uh, account. Yes. All right. So if, uh, so negative stuff can only stay on your credit report for seven years. That's a long time. Let's not, you know, let's not over, uh, overlook that. That is a long time. Seven years is a long time. Yet, when it goes to a collection agency and these collection agencies try to call you or send you letter mails or whatever, and say like it's been on your credit report for six years mm -hmm. and you respond to one of these collection agencies, whether you call them back or you uh, send the correspondence back to them, you just restarted that seven year clock and it's gonna stay on your credit report for seven years. Yes. So if, uh, if it's a collection agency, do not respond to them. Do not call them back. Do not answer their phone call. Do not talk to them. If you really wanna get it done, you call the original lender that that account was with and you talk to the original lender. Do not talk to these collection agencies. Very important. Don't fall for the tricks. Mm-mm. All right, that's uh, the end of lesson four. Credit reports list what types of credit you use, the length of time your accounts have been open, and whether you paid your bills on time. Credit report contains PII, credit account history, credit inquiries, and public records. All right, fifth lesson. We're going to talk about the credit bureaus. What credit bureaus are and what are the big three? So what is a credit bureau? Credit bureaus compile credit reports and credit scores about individual borrowers, Primarily for governments and lenders, they deal with consumer credit worthiness. Uh, credit bureaus package and analyze consumer credit reports from which credit scores are derived. Credit bureaus are private companies that are highly regulated under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. What are the big three? All right, there are several different credit bureaus, but only three that are of major national significance. All right, so these aren't the only three credit bureaus, but these are the main ones, and these are the ones that have the most importance, right? So you got Equifax, as you can see their logo to the left. You have Experian, which was the logo in the previous slide, and then you have TransUnion, which their logo is on the next slide. So this trio dominates the market for collecting, analyzing, and dispersing information about consumers and the credit markets. Uh, the calculation methods defer and Experian uses its own FICO score, also known as Experian Fair Isaac Risk Model Version 2. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you ever wonder why your, uh, your credit scores don't exactly match across the three bureaus, is because uh, the calculation differs a little bit. And then we'll talk about an, also why in, in the next couple of slides. All right, why do scores defer? Not all lenders report credit activity to each credit bureau. All right, so a credit report from one company can defer from another. That's why, because not everybody reports to all three credit bureaus at the same time. All right, uh, lenders that do report to all three agencies may see their data appear on credit reports at different times, simply because each bureau compiles data at different times of the month. So that's why your scores will defer between the big three. All right. One, not everybody reports to all three. And two, they uh, compile their data at different times of the month. So which makes sense. Like if you like I have uh, so like I have two of my credit cards. Uh, one is due on like this, the beginning of the month and the other is due on like mid month. Mm -hmm. You know, so. That's the end of fifth lesson. Uh, credit bureaus compile credit reports and credit scores about individual borrowers, primarily for government and lenders. The big threes, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and not all lenders report credit activity to each credit bureau. So my sources for uh, putting this together is investopedia.com, uh, myfico.com, and experian.com. If you go to any of these websites, they have information 
uh, that you can broaden your knowledge about credit, credit worthiness. They have a bunch of articles. They have uh, educational uh information that they put out that you can learn and broaden your horizon and learn about credit and what credit is mm -hmm. and that is the end of my presentation thank you definitely appreciate it mm -hmm. yes sir Ray. get into this credit you got any questions Huh? You got any questions? I do not right now. Um, I think that it's a, it has been a good process, the ups and the downs with credit, learning about credit um, over the years, coming from an 18 year old, um, then having you know the 620 credit score, right. really knowing about it, but you know just doing enough with a couple of credit cards. Mm -hmm. to, getting in the midst of, you know, going to school and uh, getting into student loans and all that stuff. And it's not been fun. No, so, it, has, you know, it has not. It has not. At all. And, you know, uh, it's just a good learning lesson. I can't complain, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Make sure that you take care of your credit like you take care of everything else that is great in your life. So, mm, absolutely, I definitely agree. Uh, and stop waiting until your child gets out and about on their own to figure out this credit stuff. You can start mm -hmm. teaching them young because school's not going to teach them. They are not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you went to school, so you know what they're teaching and what they're not teaching, and you know what you had to figure out once you got out of school. So. Set your child up. This is something that like has been on my mind heavy like these past couple of weeks. Is like, why are we not? I want to set up uh next generation. The next generation, I want to set up these young adults before they actually go out and do it on their own, right? Uh you you can add your uh young adult as a uh what's the word? user as a user on your credit card that's what i did um I, i've told this story on our podcast before but um jayla is on one of my credit cards that i made sure that you know is one that i pay every single month and mm -hmm. i've been doing it for some years now so um i i heard on the radio station that one bank was really really good with credit cards and and any business period and um, I said, you know, well, let me go to that bank. Let me set up an account, you know, establish the relationship. And then I'll go and get a credit card, which I did. And um, it started off with a, a low limit, mm -hmm. but just enough to get credit established. And it kept going up, kept increasing by itself. And when Jay turned 18, um, I put her as a user on my credit card. So um about i would say six months after um because she already had a job she was making a little bit of money money coming in you know it's coming in through that account that we set up and mm -hmm. it it establishes her own relationship with the bank mm -hmm. so um when she was able to apply for a credit card i said hey it's time you know you may need this money now that you're going to college to and from school, groceries, whatever else, whatever that you need, really, really need, you know, you'll have that um, capability to use that card, you know, so um, it, it has benefited us in the long run, um, but her credit score was, I want to say, in the 700s, mm. um, just based on just that one credit card. So, won't he do it? Won't he do it? The one in her. <laughs> You know, I kind of got upset about that. You know that last year. I'm, like, I'm doing all this work and you <laughs> doing the seven hundred. You mean them sevens? Had me feeling a, you know, a little in my feelings. I but know. You know, I, I think we should set up our kids. I think Absolutely. that um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it is that I need to do for um 
for mine and for other people around me to make sure that you know they are good because I don't want them to struggle the same way that I have. So. Um, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And depending on the uh, the credit the lender that you're working with, uh, you can start. Some of them start. You can start at like sixteen. Uh, I know I've heard stories where somebody was a user on their credit on their parents' credit card since it was like three or four. Yeah, I've heard that too. Um, so, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's you can if you got other family members or whatever that's trying to build credit or you know fix their credit or whatever, you could add them as lenders. You know, I mean, not lenders, but as users on your car, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they actually get a credit card. Uh, you yeah. can add somebody as a user and they have absolutely no, <laughs> they, no access to it. You, you know, mm-hmm. you control that, like just to give them that, uh, that boost, that boost, that access of like, Oh, you know, it increases like their credit limit, I mm-hmm. think, uh, on their, you know, on their credit utilization and it yeah. can, you know, and help them get down to like that 10%. Uh, credit utilization, you know, over, of overall credit worthiness. So, yeah, don't look at just you know just these young adults. But you know, if you got somebody that is that's working and you know that they're working and they putting in that work to get it better, and they just need a little boost, then hey, you know, you can yeah. be that person to help give that boost. You know, mm-hmm. information is uh, information is paramount. It is. Uh, it was something. Uh, yeah, and setting up, setting up, uh, like I said, this has been on my mind, but like setting up that next generation, these young adults of like, not them starting from zero, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like what, you know, what are we doing to help uh, help the next youth, I mean, the, the next, these young adults, this next generation enter into society in this world from what, by not starting from scratch, you know yeah. what I mean? Like. Uh, I just read, I seen, uh, I seen this mom, she, she gifted her son, like three houses, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I think he was like, he just turned like 16 or something like that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, he 16 and he has, he's got gifted three houses. Mm-hmm. So it's like, he's already has passive income or I'm pretty sure it's passive income, passive income coming in. At mm-hmm. 16, so like, and we're not, who knows how much equity those houses have mm-hmm. on top of like that passive income of coming in of like those houses being rented out. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, you're not starting from zero and you're, you know, giving that game before they go out and enter into this world. And then, you know, he can go to college and if he, you know, something comes up he has that passive income coming in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And if, you know, once he learns the game and he maybe wants to buy more houses or gets into multifamilies yep. and he needs some capital he can sell one of those houses take the equity out yes and purchase you know purchase another house purchase a multifamily purchase a you know or get started in the business venture that he's trying to get into or he may want to invest which is i think is amazing yes you know what i mean like how can we foster our youth and this next generation to mm-hmm. be better and set them up with a a a good foundation. Yes. Right. Very important. And who you bank with is very important. Yeah, that's extremely it. important. Because well, Fargo's is on fire right now. But they've they, been on the fire. That's not they, their I, food. Nah, like they they've been in the fire, but they they just pour some gasoline on it. I'm just like people. They said this a couple years ago about Wells Fargo, and I was done with them then. That's right. Like, no, y'all wasn't doing right. I, I would even say, was it four or five years ago? Might have been three. But I know it wasn't that long ago. So like Wells Fargo, you know, uh, what was it before though? Um, oh my gosh. What was the name of the bank before them? I can't remember. But my mom had them years, years ago because it was across the street from her job. So, you know, it was easy for her. Bank of America? No, it wasn't Bank of America. It was called something else. What was it? I can't remember now. I have to look it up. Mm. But I like my grandmother never told me, hey, go get Wells Fargo. She never told me that. So 
I was just like, okay, maybe it isn't such a good bank. But, you know, I think my influence came from my, my grandparents mm-hmm. um, on both sides, meaning the banking. Like, who do they bank with? Who does my mom bank with? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, are they good? Are they professional when you go in? Or are they helpful when you go in? Can you even go in to see anyone? Mm. Because I know right here in, in our area, Chase is not around here. They have an ATM, mm. but you got to drive all the way up the Wilmington. That's an hour away. Yeah, and be but, hopeful to see somebody. Well, yeah, well now it's it's changing because nobody goes into the banks anymore. Like it's all yeah. online, like online begging, like going in and actually talking down and seeing somebody and getting that free toaster is not <laughs> it's not a thing anymore. Like it's no. like banks are slow, like they're closing down these branches in different areas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like because like uh, you could what's the if you could do it all in the app, like you can apply for a loan, yeah. It, it, you can apply for your loan, sign the sign the sign the loan, and have your money all within like 20 minutes yes. in your account. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. but do we like that convenience? I mean, it works for me. I don't I don't need to go to the eight. Well, I don't need to see someone. Mm-hmm. A lot of the older generation, they gotta see that person. They, gotta they do they that money. Yes, they yeah. do. <laughs> they want to talk to something. Hey, nah, you need to talk to me face to face. I so I can hear you and understand what you're saying. <laughs> but for us, I don't need that. You know, not any one of my major banks that I deal with on a daily basis mm-hmm. is in, I would say, a one hour radius of me. One is in a two hour or three hour radius of me. But you know, it, it doesn't bother me as long as you put partial of my check in there we're good you know do what you're supposed to do make sure that you know things are taken care of and you won't even hear from me as long as i can pay my bills from that account and do things that i'm supposed to do and go to the atm um that was one thing i was getting ready to say i know for one of my banks here because it's not close to me they have an atm and that atm is down all of the time so you're trying to get to their ATM so you won't get their surcharge and then you got to go somewhere else. So it made me question, you know, do I need to put my money in there? No, mm-hmm. I do not. Because if I need to get to it and I can't, then I got to run around all over the town mm-hmm. to get to an ATM. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So That's why I like Navy Federal. They refund they refund the ATM yeah. surcharge. But the only, it's only, it's only, it's, it, it's a cap to it. Mm-hmm. so you gotta you gotta be mindful i think it's like 16 dollars is like yeah no stale refund the surcharges but i don't take out money like that anyway so i don't either yeah but i guess that's that's a thing that we need to start doing as well you know with everything that's going on we need to make sure that you know we have cash some yeah. type of cash um instead of just doing everything with cards um because yeah, yeah. We can't trust that if something happens and everything shuts down, the world shuts down, that, you know, we're going to be good because it will send some people into a panic. You heard about what Canada did, right? No. Because you know they was processing in Canada about it. Yeah. The we, did we talk about it? I know. I think we, we just talked about it. Oh, so, yeah. So, in Canada, this was like a, few, uh, a couple months ago. This was, was it February? It was February. Yeah, it was in February. They was protesting in on the border of Canada because of these uh because of these COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. And uh and Canada and their prime minister said that anybody because they was um there were some people that was impeding traffic crossing the border. So some of these, you know, freight trucks and whatever, they was impeding traffic and they didn't take too kindly to that. And they said anybody who was actively impeding traffic will have their uh bank accounts frozen mm-hmm. you know and they did it with no legislation it was just like hey this is what we're doing cut you off <laughs> and you know what i'm saying and like just like we talked about when we was talking about legislation here with gun control and all that stuff in the states all it takes is for somebody else to do it and spark that idea and then the united states would be like all right if you, you can protest but 
if we catch you doing something outside of the parameters of protesting and we mm-hmm. identify you, we're going to freeze your bank accounts. And now you don't have any access to your money. Yes. You know what I mean? And that affects you in a certain, it's, that's, yo, that's, it, it can affect you real bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that is, it's, well, and there's a push for cryptocurrency, but we'll talk about that in another section. Yeah, another day. Another day. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, got to be, you got to be real careful out here. Mm-hmm. And very strategic and thinking and moving. Absolutely. You know, don't put all of your eggs in one basket, as the older people say. Absolutely. Because, hey, I don't know if you if you haven't heard it. Banks don't even keep their money in the bank. No. Mm-mm. You got to wait a couple of days if you want to take a large amount out. Did you see what happened to the Black Panther director? Ryan Coogler. Because the amount of money that he was taking out, he was trying to tell them, hey, be discreet when you count my money that I'm trying to pull out my account. But what's funny to me is like he gave her his ID. Yeah. And if, and if that and he had the money in his account, but it flagged because it was a certain amount of money that he was trying to take yeah. out. Mm-hmm. So why are you calling authorities if I know I'm just saying I, the math ain't mathing to me. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You are you supposed to go get your manager? All right, go get your manager. You verify it, and then you give the man his money. Like, why call the police and say that he was trying to rob the bank? Because he, he because he wrote on the note, "Count my money discreetly," and he gave it to her on the note because he didn't want to he didn't want to speak it out loud because he was in a public forum. So, and he was withdrawing a significant amount of money. So he was trying to be as discreet as possible as he could. But he had a conversation with the bank and uh and I think it was with the with the actual uh uh the board of the bank and oh. he requested a resolution and that resolution they came to a resolution and you know it worked out he said okay you, this is my res- this is what I want to happen this is my resolution they came to agreement and that that agreement was made, and they made good on their agreement. So yeah, and he said, "Well, he's good to go." Yeah. So I mean, that's what I'm now. The, I don't know about that person that worked at that bank that day. Yeah. I don't know what kind of. I don't know if she's still working there or, but I don't know. I think you have to be very choicy on who you do your business with when it comes to your money. You know, just like Wells Fargo. You know. Um, you I never liked them anyway. Wells Fargo, Bank of America. I never liked them anyway. Bank of America? Mm-mm. Oh, you know, we're a fan of them. Mm-mm. I'm not a big fan of Bank of America either. Um, USAA, you know, they had a good thing going there for a minute. Then they for got a minute. Off. They uh, sure are off track. <laughs> they sure are off track. They're showing us policies too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are bugging right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. So all right though. And and isn't it funny how we go through the bank map, meaning bank to bank to bank to share our experiences. And um, like I said, listening to the radio station out of Philadelphia is where I really started paying attention to you know, the different banks and how they do business and how it can benefit you. And I always said to you, like, I don't want to, I don't want to keep calling the bank to ask them for money. I want them to call me and ask me, Miss Scott, what can I do for you? I don't like, it's not working out for me when I got to keep calling you and asking, Hey, can I get a, a automobile loan? Can I get some car insurance? Can I get this? Can I get that? Mm-hmm. And you say, no, 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 but my money is coming in and you making money off of me. Mm-hmm. So um, if it's not benefiting me in any way, shape or form, then hey, th- it's it's not adding up for me. Absolutely. Because I sure get those emails. Yeah. Hey, that's auto loan interest rates right now. Come join. No, I'm good. Yeah. Let me just try to send me this uh, auto generated email. I don't mm-hmm. care about your auto loans right now. Yeah. But, you know, here, um, I found out, like, in the last year, one bank here, um, 
I had my own experience with them. I went in and I tried to open a, a account back up and they told me that I couldn't. And the branch manager was so nasty. Um, and I was just like, you know, if my money's not good enough for you, honey, you don't have to wor- worry about me ever. <laughs> and ever since, like, I noticed through Facebook, people in our area have been blasting them because of how they've been doing business. Mm. They can't log on to their accounts and they can't go in to see anyone. It's a long wait. It's just stupid stuff. So again, it goes back to how they treat you because they love your money coming in. Absolutely. Don't be scared to jump ship and go to a bank that's going to treat you right is what I should say. Um, it has to benefit you in some way, shape, or form. And if it doesn't, you need to pull your money out and mm-hmm. go to somebody that will appreciate you. Absolutely. Don't be scared. Yes. Don't be scared. Because I've had my share of bad banks and, and you know, the relationships was just, I will never go back to them again. Mm. I can dig mm-hmm. it. I can dig it. Yes. I'm trying to get in anyway. All righty. So we gonna we gonna do a part two next week. Uh, I don't think so. I went through everything. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we are gonna jump to the next topic. We're gonna. Oh, you wanna do that now? Uh no, 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 no. No, no I'm no. saying we we gonna do the advertising for it. I oh, let me. See. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to stop. Stop. Yeah. All right.